Wales near 100% uh, monopoly over transportation creates in many ways our uh, biggest problem. It is not accidental that eight out of nine of the world's leading oil exporters are autocrats or royal kingdoms. It is no secret that the um, trillions of dollars that Americans and others have spent on expensive oil from the Middle East uh, funded, helped fund the expansion of radical Islam worldwide. In our struggle between the world of freedom and the world of terror, one of the most important point, uh, weapons which our enemies have, it's oil. We are more oil used, more money for terror. This formula is very simple. We are either going to launch a real green revolution, or we are going to be a banana republic. In the utility business, they use the acronym banana. You've heard the acronym NIMBY, not in my backyard. The utility guys speak of banana. Build absolutely nothing anywhere near anything. <laughs> banana, okay? And either we're gonna get our act together for a real green revolution, or when it comes to renewable power, we will build absolutely nothing anywhere near anything. The Department of Energy in the U.S. forecasts that in the next 50 years, energy consumption in the world will double. It's very important for Israel, security and economy, that Israel becomes a world leader in alternative energy. Israel's number one strategic priority should be to minimize the U.S. dependency on oil. The second priority should be to minimize the world dependency on oil. There will never be peace here as long as there is oil. Well, Israel is a hotbed of uh, ideas in general. Israel is um, a community which is full of uh, creativity, originality, ingenuity, thinking out of the box. Uh, something about our culture, something about the challenges that Israel faced throughout its uh, uh, existence uh, taught our people that um, uh, even though your resources are limited, you, you have to, to find solutions which are not, which uh, other people did not think about. And uh, I think that applies to um, alternative energy as well. So supporting scientific research in Israel, cultivating the wonderful minds that we have here, uh, using the, the wonderful culture of you know, innovation that we have here could have a tremendous impact. Ideally, what do we want? We want a low oil price and we want full support for alternative energy. And why do we want both? Because there is a certain country, plus another one, for whom low oil prices are a death knell. And one of them is Iran. We get every week from our office of research grants and contracts, a list of where we can apply for grants. You know, one third of this place's budget comes from grants. That's how I can do research. I mean, week after week after week, chemistry and physics and math are empty. There is nowhere to apply. As a result, we ask today our engineers to do something that is nearly mission impossible. We want our engineers now to give us new solutions to find replacements for oil, where all that we provide them is the basic research, which is more or less where we left it in 1982, 1984. We would be able to fund students, which means a commitment for four and a half years, which at the moment is very difficult to make. I cannot tell someone, yes, here, find a student who wants to work on alternative energy. And then after a year say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have any more money. There's something here with all the Kassams and all the politics that makes it different. It beats any place in the world. And uh, again, you have to explain because you're the psychologist. I don't know why, but it's clear. And that's also why some of us have this uh, megalomaniac uh, idea that we can actually make a difference. It's pretty obvious to me that a small country like Israel 
uh, that had no fuel supply, natural fuel supplies uh, should, if it possible, exploit solar energy with which it has a very large amount. There were in Israel a small number of solar water heaters, but the copies were very poor and the efficiency was very low. Now I found a trick based on pure physics for doubling the efficiency of these collectors. And that changed the whole picture. And an Israel company with whom I had no connection at all picked this up and as a consequence they built the first major solar energy power stations in California, five stations, it was a total of something like 300 megawatts of electricity. I never believed that was possible. This can be used as a contribution on what Israel contributes to society, not just to Jews. Because everybody's using this system now for making energy. The only way that solar is going to take off is if it can be cost effective. That is cheaper than coal or oil or gas. Now it can. And by concentrating light on, our, on a big mirror uh, onto this little specially designed cell and cooling it, we concentrated the, the, we concentrated the light a thousand times and we got 1,500 watts out of that cell. That is, in one foul swoop, we reduced the cost per watt of the most expensive item in a conventional PV system by a factor of 1,500. Uh, there is a, a dilemma, a huge dilemma right now in the world. And the dilemma is the competition between plants for biofuel production and plants for food production. My job is to find ways or methods how to grow plants for biofuel extraction in arid land or in marginal land, poor agricultural land, where the water supply is limited. So what can be done? In my laboratory here at the Technion, we developed a technology that allows plants to grow on minimal water supply. In other words, you can use as little as 30% of the water that requires for plants and yet to get the same yield from the plants. And this will be the solution for growing plants not only in Israel but all over the world. Golda Meyer was asked once, what is the Jewish secret weapon? You know the answer? Ein Breira. And she absolutely right. So everything that Jews do is largely the result of the Ein Breira.